Very good. Welcome, everybody. Thank the, you. Uh, Thank you. Regular council meeting of September 8th, 2020. And again, we are doing a virtual meeting uh, someday soon. I hope we can meet in face to face. Uh, I said the very first time we did this, I didn't want to become proficient at doing this meetings, which meant we've been doing them for too long and we're getting better at them. I don't want to be good at these kind of meetings. <laughs> I, I want to get back to face to face as soon as we can. But with that, let me call to order. I gotta get my, there we go. Get the gavel. I got my gavel, there we go. If you would please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Clerk, please call the roll. Anders? Here. Kochi? Here. Spinks? Here. Janudis? Here. Fluharty? Here. Mizak? Here. Rhodes? Here. Hey, Council, you have the uh, minutes of the work session of August 3rd, 2020. Any corrections to that? Hearing none, can I have a motion for approval? By Spink, second by Mizak. Clerk, call the roll, please. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Mizak? Yes. <clears throat> Rhodes? Again, Council, you have the minutes of the regular meeting of August 3rd, 2020. Any corrections to those? Seeing none, can I have a motion for acceptance? Okay. Janudis, second by Rhodes. Clerk, call the roll, please. Saunders? Yes. Mochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Fluharty? Yes. Mizak? Yes. Rhodes? Yes. Okay, we have no old business tonight. Um, before we get on to our reports, I think there's a big congratulations in order for Councilman Vic Fluharty being a new grandpa. Just found hey. out, what, uh, two hours ago that he's got a new grandson. Six hey. o'clock. Yeah, it's six o'clock. <coughs> excellent. excellent. Thank you, thank you. Congratulations to you and your family and uh, and your kids, and that's exciting time. Number twelve at the table now. All right. Well, you you need a bigger table. Yes, yeah. I do. Okay. Uh, reports, Mr. City Manager. Thank you, Mayor. I uh, just want to go over a couple of uh, quick announcements. Um, starting next week, our fire department is going to be working with our water. To and we're going to start hydrant flushing throughout town. Um, so that will start on September 14th. And our fire um, civil service commission is giving a fire and EMS entry exam. That exam will be held on September 26th. For more information, um, feel free to visit our website. Frank, I'm sure um, you'll mention something as well. Um, I want to uh, thank everyone for cooperation regarding uh, the city's road program, specifically the Forbes Road Project um, and the detours. Um, I understand that, you know, there were some challenges with that. Um, and I'm happy to say that we're completed. We have some striping to do on Forbes, um, but ultimately it was a good project. We were able to get it done. And again, I just want to thank everyone for their uh, cooperation with those two projects. Um, we're also, we held a pre-construction meeting last week with the contractor that is going to be starting our sewer um, cleaning and maintenance program this year. 
Um, if you recall, the city was awarded a, a $150,000 CDBG grant um, where we will be working with a contractor um, during in specific areas of the town. Um, and they're gonna be going through televising and cleaning areas of the sewer. Um, uh, those, that project will start on Henry and it's gonna be primarily targeting the, the streets up on the hill like Best, Henry, John, um, and some of the others. Um, I don't have an estimated time of completion. Um, it all depends on you know, what, um, you know, how smooth the project goes, um, but I will provide an update to council and hopefully have a, uh, an update uh, on the status of that project um, at the next meeting. But again, that project is going to start as well. Um, and that's gonna be on September 14th. So um, look for that. You know, the, the good news is we'll be doing that in that area of town. Um, but I'm sure there'll be some spots that we'll need to go in afterwards um, internally and the city will address those at that time. Um, and as far as, you know, sewers, I know that um, like many other communities we had, uh, we experienced a significant amount of rainfall yesterday. Um, I believe we were just short of four inches um, based on the data that came out of our wastewater plant. Um, someone had indicated that it was Cleveland's third worst rainfall um, on record. Um, we were not immune to that. We did have um, residents that experienced flooding. Um, you know, there were some streets that were holding water. We did have um, RPD and we were patrolling. Um, you know, the water did subside, absolutely. Um, and we were fortunate enough that we did not have to um, block any of those roads, uh, unlike some other communities that did have to close streets. We were fortunate in that regard, um, but we did experience some flooding. We know there's some residents that experienced flooding too. Um, if you're still having issues, um, please contact our service department. Um, uh, the number is located on our website. You can also send an email to us as well. Um, and we will see what we can do uh, to assist. Um, before I move on, anybody that has any questions or concerns or comments for at the end of the meeting, you can email those to citymanager at bedfordoh.gov. Again, that's citymanager at bedfordoh.gov. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Mr. Law Director. For tonight, Mayor. Just hope everyone's doing well. And uh, if anybody needs any help, just give me a call. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Mr. Finance Director. Hey, congratulations, Vic, once again. Thank you. And um, tonight, um, like Mike said, we have fire civil service going September 26th. We're still accepting applications on that. So a lot of people are concerned about uh, the cap that we had on there. However, we're at 20, 20 candidates right now, so we still have room for more. And I uh, just want to let people know about that. We also have a uh, records re uh, destruction day coming up late September. I believe it's the 26th or 18th. Uh, check our website for the proper date. Also, those who are applying for water discounts this year, uh, because we have that uh, social distancing issue, uh, we are accepting those uh, if they're sent to our tax department at 165 Center Road. Mark on your envelope that it's for the water discounts application. Uh, we will then uh, process those accordingly as they are, are completed by yourselves. Uh, also, if you want to, we have, uh, you could drop it off right at City Hall. The tax department has a uh, drop off box for tax returns, but we have envelopes there. You could put your information in an envelope, mark it again, water discount program, and we'll process it accordingly that way also. So that's a couple different ways that you can uh, actually get uh, all that work done. And uh, we'll be processing those shortly for the year 2021. Uh, that's the end of my report. Thank you. Thank you. Council, Mr. Saunders. All right. First questions for Frank on the, on the disc water discount. Does everybody have to refile every year for that? Every Yes, it's in the ordinance. You must refile every year. Correct. Okay, because I'm going to have to do it for my father's house. Right. Many people will do it for each other. Yes. He's 94 and he wouldn't understand that anymore. Okay. I've All had right. people actually come in and drop those off on behalf of their parents. That is correct. Uh, is there a form or? 
Yes, what's not we have those forms. We've already sent them out to those who had discounts last year. So we make sure that everybody gets that sent to them. If you need others, we have those available in our tax department. You can call or I can I can arrange to get that to you. All right, that, that takes care of that end. Uh, the rest are all for Mike. Uh, you mentioned that you're only televising and cleaning the sewers up on the hill. And yet we have us we have something wrong with the main down Berwyn around uh, the 70s. Uh, houses have televised their sewers and theirs are clean and they're still backing out. So if we could have somebody check the main on Berwyn. Uh, our our staff, I'm going to, I'm going to be speaking with our, actually I've spoken to our staff already. I've spoken to a couple of the residents there and our staff is looking at that. Yes. Okay. Cause you know, we're doing me. that. They've we're called me that. too. <laughs> so, uh, now back, uh, let's see, we've got you. We remember last year we cut down a sycamore tree on Ennis just before Logan. Uh, the other sycamore trees dropping branches now. Uh, I hope it's not as hollow as the one we took down was, but we may want to look into that tree because uh, it it's not doing very well. People in that area are worried their cars are going to get hit again, like it did with the other one. So A Logan or Ennis? Ennis. It's right next. It's on the next tree lawn over from the one we cut down last year. Okay. Right before Logan, or just west of Logan, I should say. You can't miss the tree. It's the big old sycamore tree. So it's dropping stuff now, too, just like the other one did. And we have uh, Lincoln. That manhole at Columbus, every time it rains for the last two decades, has been blowing water. You would, the residents are a little miffed in that area that we haven't done anything in decades. Is that an area we can televise? Because I would assume the problem is on Columbus Road that keeps that from flowing, or is the sewer that undersized that it blows every time it rains? It doesn't matter whether it's a light rain, a heavy rain, or whatnot. It just keeps blowing up. We have a geyser there at the intersection every time it rains. I'll I'll have our I'll have our crews take a look at that again. Yeah, well, like I said, it's been doing this for decades. And granted, with the last couple rains we've had over the last two weeks, it's really blowing it up. But uh, there's a problem somewhere, whether it's all the way down. Remember, a couple of years ago, we found the problem. It was at Johnson where the whole sewer had collapsed. But uh, that kind of pressure running through a storm sewer will blow joints and all kinds of stuff. Uh, something's wrong somewhere there, and it needs to be looked at a little bit more thoroughly. So if, th if they would take a quick look at that, it would be much appreciated for the people who live in that area. So now the other thing is, is Forbes Road. Now I sent you... And the uh, text on Forbes Road, the concrete section by the VFW, when they poured that, two days later, they rolled the roller onto it. They were running equipment on that concrete. Concrete, when it's freshly poured, should have no traffic on it for a minimum of 10 days, and it doesn't fully cure for 28 uh, I hope that didn't cause micro cracks in there that in a few years, the salt doesn't blow it and spall it out. But uh, they were using it with heavy machinery and it's brand new concrete. Granted, yeah, you can drive on it if you really wanted to after eight hours, but uh, that's not recommended, especially with heavy equipment. So I just want to make note that uh, that concrete could have a problem at a later date because they put some heavy equipment on it. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Spinks. Good evening, everybody. Hope everybody's doing good. I know today was first day of school and I know there was a few little glitches here and there. I know the 
it was going to be strange for the kids and the teachers um, for a while. This is kind of our new normal right now. Um, had the pleasure of visiting with my grandchildren. They're seven and ten this weekend, and my uh, seven-year-old granddaughter uh, granddaughter said that uh, that COVID has made her more appreciative of the small things in life. I thought that that was really cute coming from a seven-year-old. Um, she said she's enjoyed her downtime of not being so busy. I don't think every kid feels that way, but uh, um, so welcome back kids to the school for this year. Hope everybody stays safe. Um, Mike, I have a question for you. Um, limbs, uh, the chipper service out coming out this week with the holidays being yesterday, or is it going to be this week, the second week? No, it'll be the it'll be this week. Okay, okay. Because I had a couple of residents, and I know a lot of limbs and stuff were down from the bad rain that we had uh, last night, and then a lot of people just doing, doing a lot of yard work. I've noticed that on my uh, daily uh, ward checks, a lot of limbs are on the side. Um, there's also a residence on Willard, and along with a bunch of limbs, he has a bunch of old boards. I know the house is for sale right now. Garbage picked those up or who I noticed that they didn't get them last week. So who uh, would be uh, responsible for picking up those boards? Garbage did not collect them? No. What's the They're address? For about two weeks. Um, I can give it to you later. Okay, um, if you could send that to me, that'd be great. If you take a drive down Willard, you can't miss it because it's a pretty big... Paul, I, I know the chipper service will get um, the limbs, but it's right by the limbs. So, um, okay. Construction debris. Yeah. And just uh, one last thing is uh, I'd like to give a big shout out of appreciation to uh, the Downtown Alliance for the mural that went up the road to freedom. Um, three spectacular artists, um, graffiti heart, um, steamy friend of mine they do spectacular things it's so great to see finally art and part of history um in our beautiful downtown i'm so excited about this i hope this is just the beginning of a bunch of artwork um that's going to be going on in our city um, very excited about that uh congratulations uh, big thank you to matt stewart i know he had a big hand in it as well um, one of our local business owners who gives back a lot to our city. So I just want to say thank you, Matt, uh, if you're listening for doing that because it needed to be done. And um, end of report. Thank you. Mr. Janudis. Thank you. Well, congratulations to Grandpa Vic over there. Thank you. <laughs> That's exciting. Um, and I was very happy to sit in my backyard and hear the high school football game on Friday. That was, uh, that was really nice. The, I'm glad they're playing the games and uh, the kids have endured a lot. And uh, I, I, my heart goes out to them. Uh, also, yeah, the mural. Isn't that exciting? That's really neat. If anyone hasn't seen it, please go down and see the mural. That is really, really a good thing. Uh, and uh, that's the end of my report. Thank you. Thank you. Grandpa Vic. <laughs> oh, thank you, Mayor. Excuse uh, me, Mr. Fluharty. There you go. <laughs> uh, I got some people been calling me about where we're going to vote in our ward since the uh, uh, Villa Hearts is where we usually are. They're not going to be using that because it's an assisted living place. I still haven't gotten an answer from the Democratic P uh, Party down in Cleveland. They're voting on trying to figure out where they're going to have it. But uh, when I do get it, I will try to make that announcement again. Uh, so we don't know where we're voting uh, in our ward as of now. Uh, Mike, I know we're not getting Union Street done this year, uh, uh, hopefully next year. But can we do some kind of uh, patching or surfacing work on that ourselves for the winter? Because I'm getting a lot of complaints of some little holes starting to come up there. Um, try to smooth it out as best as we can until next year. Um, 
and then thank you for getting Forge Road done and, and taking care of that with Oakwood and being uh, working with them and getting it all. People in the neighborhood here are glad to hear that that road's uh, finally open again. So, end of report. Thank you. Mrs. Mizek. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, everybody. Um, it's hard to say I'd like to see everybody because we still have to be grounded, but um, Ward 4 is doing rather well. I think a lot of the new neighbors have made friends. We do have two beautiful ladies on, in our area that are doing an exercise program before it gets dark at night. And they keep on asking if I want to come and join them, but it's just not on my schedule yet. So I passed on that. But I wanted to say thank you to Billy for our, that works at our city for keeping the flowers in the downtown area so beautiful. I know fall's coming, but he does a, a great job all year long. And the ones on Union Street Bridge are beautiful, except for your little bit of washboard there, Vic. But congratulations for the new baby. Uh, two things, um, you know, I am a, uh, when I want, when I want somebody, to, I can't express myself, put it this way. When I say, say something or do, or do something, if something should happen to you, uh, over a, a period of time, well, in August, and that was a bad month for the city and us too, um, I was approached by a Ask a young man at the gas station and wanted to come in our car. And I refused to let him in. And I had called dispatch right away and they were very caring. And Officer River was one of the best guys that took care of me that day that I can say thank you to from the bottom of my heart. One more thing, please say a prayer for the two officers that lost their life over the weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Rhodes. Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming. Uh, first of all, I wanted to let you know the Curtain Club is putting on their annual uh, Pink Mum sale. If you're not familiar with these, uh, the Pink Mum is Bedford's official uh, flower. So if you would like to show off your Bedford pride, you can go to bedfordgardenclub.com slash mum dash sale, and that will take you to our mum sale. Uh, you can order some mums. You'll be able to pick them up on Saturday. Any that are not picked up, we will be delivering to local addresses. So um, if you don't want to, uh, right now we're using online payments. Uh, if you don't want to use an online payment, please feel free to email me, uh, heather at bedfordward5number5.com, and uh, just let me know what you would like to order. We'll have them ready for you to pick up and pay for on Saturday. Uh, we'll be doing pickup on Saturday from 10 to 1 p 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Um, on Saturday as well. Uh, as everybody has mentioned, we have this big, beautiful new mural in our downtown area. Uh, Matt Stewart and Kathy Chach uh, both worked very hard on that, um, and we very much appreciate their, their efforts towards this. Uh, so the Road to Freedom mural will be doing an unveiling ceremony on Saturday as well. Uh, that will be from, uh, they'll be at noon. Uh, it's just going to be a short ceremony. Uh, the, the artists will be there. Uh, Matt as the building owner, Kathy as our, our point person on that project will be there. I believe the mayor will be there. <laughs> so, um, you know, come on down uh, and help us celebrate bringing um, such a beautiful piece of artwork to our downtown area. Uh, and, you know, this is not the last beautiful piece of artwork that we plan on, on bringing to the downtown area. The Bedford Downtown Alliance, one of our uh, goals is to bring uh, delight and serendipity to our downtown area through art <laughs> and uh, um, you know awe and wonder. So we actually have another mural in the works. Uh, we we have it funded. Uh, we are currently in talks with another building owner, uh, and um, and we're going to be working on that one. Um, we'd like to see more projects come up. I, I don't know if many people know this, but we actually have some um, several pieces of art in our downtown area, whether it be the uh, fence over by the Historical Society uh, or the mural that's um, behind the Dunham House or the mural that's in our, our Veterans Park. Uh, those are all you know, pieces of artwork that we have in our downtown area as well. Uh, we'd like to invite all Bedford residents to help Bedford Downtown Alliance make more art and more fun and more joy in our downtown area. Uh, all you have to do is, is volunteer. Just, just come and help us make stories. That's what we do. We remember the old stories, such as you see on the mural uh, on Willis Street. 
And we also, um, we make the news stories that uh, your, your children and your grandchildren will tell their children and grandchildren about. So uh, our next uh, meeting for volunteering is the fourth Thursday of the month. It's at 7 p.m. at DePompey's. Um, you didn't hear it from me, but if you show up, you probably get a free drink. Uh, and uh, <laughs> we'd love to see you uh, join us at that meeting. Um, thank you very much and end of report. Thank you. A lot of good stuff there. Um, I just want to say uh, good evening to everybody and hope everybody stay and stay safe and hopefully we're going to be working our way out of this uh, COVID situation soon. It won't be real soon, but let's work on it and stick together and get through it and try to get back as normal as we can. And uh, with that, let's get on to business. Ordinance number 9803-20, an ordinance amending ordinance number 9738-19, making additional appropriations for current expenditures of the City of Bedford, Ohio, during the year 2020 and declaring an emergency. And it's our wish to... Uh, uh, put that on the third reading. I need a motion for suspension by Rhodes, second by Spinks. Clerk, call the roll. Saunders. You're muted, you're muted. Yeah, I'm muted, all right, <laughs> yes. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Fluhardy? Yes. Misak? Yes. Rhodes? Yes. Okay, motion for third and final by Fluhardy, second by Saunders. Um, I'll take that. Frank, yes. Yeah, getting back to normal, we have quite a few adjustments to the budget this year. Um, right now we have some electric bills that were high in the uh, recreation department, uh, refunds, substantial amount of refunds that we gave back out to the public for functions that we had to do, we have to appropriate. And we had unemployment benefits that we had to pay out from recreation. Building department had some software costs that we bought a new system on. Uh, so that's the $26,800 item there. We had uh, substantial amounts of COVID cleaning contracts uh, for all our departments, the building, city hall, keeping it uh, sanitized and uh, disinfected as much as possible. So we have costs there. Plus we bought uh, some PCs to, and laptops to work from home for uh, seven different individuals. The uh, SEAL program uh, was uh, lucky enough to obtain and uh, through good work, uh, another $131,686 in a grant to help them with the drug LEF program. We also had our streets had to be reduced this year, unfortunately, because the gas tax has been substantially down uh, in what we've received this year. So we've taken that out of the budget at $185,000 out of the 209 fund. We still have the 400,000 that we're spending uh, already on the uh, capital improvement plan. We have a lot more we bought out of street m &R also. We had a, numerous amounts of police grants and small items there. Uh, we had a uh, we have a purchase of a police car that we had to do uh, for twenty seven thousand out of the cap improvement funds. And tonight you're going to hear about engineering costs for Forbes Road of twenty nine nine. Uh, streets, uh, engineering costs at 36562 uh, We're starting to work on Ellenwood, a water line. Uh, so we have preliminary uh, planning costs uh, in regards to that. We're going to cap that at 46000 We had the uh, Wood Creek Trunk Engineering where we had $8,000 there. And what happened on all of these is the original ordinances addressed the construction only and didn't address the engineering part. So now we're addressing the engineering part that goes with each of those projects. And you'll see those ordinances follow from this ordinance that we're uh, looking to approve this evening. We also had two other major ones in the sewer monitoring that EPA required uh, in the sewer fund, 88,800. And finally, our CDBG grant that we received from the county for cleaning and sewer uh, televising for $150,000. I ask council to approve that ordinance this evening, please. Thank you. Clerk, call the roll, please. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Fluhardy? Yes. 
Mizak? Yes. Rhodes? You're muted. Sorry, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Council. Uh, ordinance number 9804-20, an ordinance authorizing the finance director to pay GPD group engineering fees for the Forbes Road resurfacing and declaring an emergency. And again, we would like to have a suspension. Motion for such by Saunders, second by Mizak. Clerk, call the roll, please. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Fluhardy? Yes. Mizak? Yes. Rhodes? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Um, motion for third and final by Rhodes, second by Janudis. If uh, Frank, would you like to take that? Or we can have Mike as soon as he gets You're back muted. Up. You're muted. Frank, Frank. Sorry muted. about that. Got it. <laughs> Got to find the little, uh, my mouse to go click on it. Uh, yeah, the uh, these three, B, C, and D, are all what we refer to in the ordinance, the appropriation ordinance, that we're going to be allowing the uh, expenses associated to the engineering on the projects that we already proved. Uh, in prior ordinances. So that's what we're going to be doing with Forbes Road, um, the street improvement program we have this year, and for Ellen Hood Water Line. So that's B, C, and D that we're addressing right now. Thank you. Ask council to pass those. Any questions? Clerk, call the roll, please. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Fluhardy? Yes. Mizak? Yes. Rhodes? <coughs> yes. Okay, ordinance number 9805-20. An ordinance authorizing and directing the finance director to pay GPD group for engineering fees for the 2020 street improvement program and declaring an emergency. Need a motion for suspension by Saunders, second by Rhodes. Uh, clerk, call the roll, please. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Fluhardy? Yes. Mizak? Yes. Rhodes? Yes. Thank you. A motion for third and final by Mizak, second by Spinks. Uh, Frank explained this. It's part of the engineering fears You're for ready. other uh, road projects. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for Frank? Seeing none, clerk call the roll, please. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Bluehardy? Yes. Mizak? Yes. Rhodes? Yes. All right, ordinance number 9806-20, an ordinance authorizing and directing the finance director to pay GPD group for engineering services in anticipation of the necessary Ellenwood water line replacement project and declaring an emergency. Need a motion for suspension by Fluhardy, second by Janudis. Clerk, call the roll, please. Saunders? Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Fluhardy? Yes. Mizak? Yes. Rhodes? Yes. And motion for third and final by Mizak, second by Fluhardy. Uh, again, Frank explained these are engineering fees yeah. for the projects, our road projects. Mm -hmm. And uh, the water line. So, any questions? Clerk, call the roll, please. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Fluhardy? Yes. Mizak? Yes. Rhodes? 
Yes. And ordinance number 9807-20, an ordinance amending ordinance number 6950-97, section 1341.19, entitled Removal of Weeds by Owner Occupant Notice of the codified ordinances of the city of Bedford and declaring an emergency. And I believe it's our intention to put this on first reading and can I have a motion for such? I speak second by Janudis. Clerk, call the roll, please. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Mezak? Yes. Rhodes? Yes. Okay, ordinance number 9808-20. Ordinance appropriating the city's coronavirus relief fund payment received pursuant to amended substitute House Bill 481 to the city's COVID-19 response and directing the city manager to declare a proclamation. I need a suspension by Mizak, second by Rhodes. Clerk, call the roll, please. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Mizak? Yes. Rhodes? Yes. And yeah, motion for third and final by Flu Hardy, second by Janudis. Um, Frank, I think you need to explain this. You spent a whole lot of time research in yeah. this. I'm going to give you a short brief synopsis. I'm not going to go into it as much as we explained earlier, but uh, this ordinance uh, working with our law director and with outside counsel from Bricker and Eckler, uh, we have determined that we are looking to, to utilize uh, the first responders and their costs associated to that um, for substantially directing their time and their new tasks that they have dealing with the COVID uh, 19 responses with our uh, EMS uh, squad. In doing so, uh, the new uh, the Department of the Treasury came out with guidance in regards to how the funds can be spent, as well as us working. I've been working diligently with the Ohio Budget and Management Department and uh, working with them in regards to uh, the uh, way that this ordinance has to be worded and the way that we're directing our employees and the way we account for all of these funds that are being spent. And in doing so, it's going to allow the city to utilize that funding that we receive from the CARES program. And we will be able to uh, uh, utilize those funds. And um, by passage of this ordinance, it's the start of the process that uh, allows us to do so. So I ask council to pass that this evening. Thank you. Any questions? Seeing none, clerk, call the roll, please. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Flu Hardy? Yes. Mezak? Yes. Rhodes? Yes. Thank you. Ordinance number 9809-20. An ordinance authorizing and directing the city manager to enter into a contract with Nick's Tree Service and declaring an emergency. I need a uh, motion for suspension by uh, Spinks, second by Saunders. Clerk, call the roll, please. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Flu Hardy? Yes. Mizak? Yes. Rhodes? Yes. And I need a motion for third and final by Rhodes, second by Janudis. Are, are we putting this on first reading? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, we are. <laughs> Before we do that, how about a motion for first reading? First reading. Wait, uh, Mike, you have something? I, I was confused. I, um, did we skip oh, no, over no, the no. hair? No, no, no. This is a, this is, we were right. Yeah. Oh. We skipped over Harrison Street. I, I did skip that one. Okay, we'll go back to that. This is 90. Oh, they must have stuck together here. Wait a minute. 
Yep. My page is stuck together. Sorry about that. We'll we'll do that one next. But this is still for Nick's tree service, oh. and uh, we do need the uh, uh, third and final. Right. Then we have a suspension, and we did have a third and final, correct? No. Okay, we need a third and final. Yeah. That's the disadvantage of doing this online. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Motion by uh, Janutis, second by Fluharty. <laughs> and Mike, if you want to explain that one. Uh, um, yes, this is this is a combination of um, two projects. The first one being uh, we've identified 16 trees that uh, they're throughout the city that are um, too large, hazardous, uh, and near wires for our crews to take down. Um, so we went out and got quotes for those. Um, Nick's tree service was the lowest and most responsible. We've worked with uh, Nick's before. Um, and then on top of that, our Parks and Recreation Department is doing a park by park assessment. Um, they've identified um, a long list of trees throughout various city parks. <coughs> they also went out and received multiple quotes. Um, Davy Tree quoted at over 17,000. Um, and Nick's can, ended up coming in um, at the lowest and most responsive as well. The, with the idea that we combined them both into one ordinance um, and we'd like to go forward with the Nick's tree service um, to take care of all these trees. And for those of you that, that may have, some people have asked me already um, if they've seen uh, an X on a tree or a large E, uh, the X are the ones that um, our arborist has determined that they're diseased or dead and need to be removed. And the E simply is to elevate and, and trim. Thank you. Any questions? Clerk, call the roll, please. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Janutis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Nizak? Yes. Rhodes? Yes. Okay, we will go back to ordinance number 9809-20. An ordinance rezoning permanent parcel numbers 812-04-001, 812-04-002, 812-04-003, 812-04-004, 812-04-040, 812-03-012, 812-03-013. And 812-03-013. Located at Harrison Street, described herein uh, from I-1 to B-2A classification and declaring an emergency. And this, this is one we want to put on first reading. And can I have a motion for such? By uh, Rhodes, second by Janudis. Clerk, call the roll, please. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Flu Hardy? Yes. Mizak? Yes. Rhodes? Yes. Thank you. Sorry for that little mix up. Ordinance number 9811 12. An ordinance authorizing and directing the city manager to enter into a contract with Campo Piano Roofing for roof replacement at the service department and declaring an emergency. And that we need a suspension for by Janudis, second by Saunders. Call the roll, please. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Lou Hardy? Yes. Mizak? Yes. Rhodes? Yes. Yes. And we need a motion for third and final by Mizak, second by Janudis. Yeah. Um, uh, Mike? Uh, yes, Mayor. We, we were planning a, um, doing a project down at the service garage um, and we budgeted for that. Um, getting part of this year, things obviously had changed. Um, we have some issues in a portion of, um, of our roof down at uh, the Solon Road garage and we want to get that uh, roof replaced. 
Um, we received two quotes, Compo Piano came in at $43,000 um, and Barnes Roofing came in at $51,000. Um, we added in the do not exceed in this ordinance um, because there is the possibility of hidden work, for instance, replacing some of the metal decking um, as well as some rotted panels. That's why it is written in that fashion. Um, Campo Piano has done another portion of the service garage in the past. We were very happy with the work and being at their lower, uh, we recommend going with this improvement. Thank you. Any other questions for Mike? Seeing none, clerk call the roll, please. Saunders? Yes. Pochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Fluhardy? Yes. Nizak? Yes. Robes? Yes. Okay, ordinance number 9812-20. An ordinance Ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a cooperative agreement with the village of Oakwood, allowing the city of Bedford to conduct resurfacing operations on Forbes Road in the village of Oakwood and declaring an emergency. I have a um, motion for suspension by Janudis, second by Mark, Fluharty. $1,500. Clerk, call the roll, please. Saunders? Yes. Coaching? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Fluhardy? Yes. Misa? Yes. Rhodes? Yes. Thank you. Uh, I, I see on my screen there's a, a mat and a uh, phone, a 216 number. Could I ask you to please mute your uh, devices, please? Okay. Uh, motion for third and final by Mizak, second by Janudis. Uh, Mike, you can explain this. Uh, yes, this is um, Village of Oakwood reached out to us. We were in the process of doing uh, the Forbes Road resurfacing, um, working with the county as far as um, Bedford and the 50 50 grant. Um, they wanted to. Uh, with our contractor already being there, they wanted to take steps that they needed to get their portion uh, resurfaced. Um, we're working with them to do that. Uh, they're working with our, our contractor. What Bedford, the agreement entails is Bedford will cover the cost um, of those additional expenses until October 15th. Village of Oakwood is going to pay for 100% of the costs associated with that resurfacing and pay us back. Um, they'll also pay for any additional remobilization charges, inspection charges, and any other fees, administrative and whatnot, by that deadline. So overall, this is a good deal. We're able to get the entire roadway done, um, and we are basically um, entering into that agreement with Oakwood that we would cover those costs for the next uh, 45 days. Thank you. Any questions? Seeing none, clerk, call the roll, please. Saunders? No. Yes. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Fluhardy? Yes. Nizak? Yes. Rhodes? Yes. Okay. Ordinance number 9813-20. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a change order for the Forbes Road resurfacing with Burton Scott Contractors, LLC, and declaring an emergency. Can I have a motion for suspension, please? By Janudis, second by Saunders. Clerk, call the roll. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Fluhardy? Yes. Mizak? Yes. Rhodes? Yes. And a motion for third and final by Janudis, second by Spinks. And um, Mike, you this, uh, this additional $50,000 represents that additional work that I had uh, discussed in the previous ordinance. Uh, the estimate for Oakwood Village is roughly about uh, $42,000. 
There's a small portion of Bedford work, which is about $4,000. Um, so that's why it's a do not exceed 50. It will come in under that. Um, and from Bedford's standpoint, our originally budgeted number, we'll, we will, even with the addition of that $4,000, we will come in under budget. Good. Any questions? Seeing none, clerk, call the roll, please. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Mizak? Yes. Rhodes? Yes. Okay, ordinance number 9814-20, an ordinance amending section 1949.19 of the Planning and Zoning Code entitled Signs Permitted in B2A District of the City of Bedford, Ohio and Declaring an Emergency. Need a motion for suspension by Spink, second by Fluharty. Clerk, call the roll, please. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Fluharty? Yes. Mizak? Yes. Rhodes? Yes. A motion for third and final by Saunders, second by Rhodes. Uh, Mike? Uh, yes, this is cleaning up a uh, ordinance that we um, updated last year. If, for those of you that remember, we went through and, and did some extensive updates regarding our sign ordinance. Our previous sign ordinance um, had a 30-foot limit on pole signs throughout the B2A uh, district, the Auto Mile district, and it was left out of those updates, and we would simply want to uh, add that back in just so we're consistent with the current signage that's there and anybody in the future looking to um, add signage that it'll be consistent within the district. Okay, any questions? Seeing none, clerk, call the roll, please. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Fluharty? Yes. Mizak? Yes. Yes. And resolution number 2555-20, a resolution accepting the amounts and rates as determined by the Budget Commission and authorizing the necessary tax levies and certifying them to the county fiscal officer and declaring an emergency. I have a motion for suspension, please. By Janudis, second by Spinks. Clerk, call the roll, please. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Fluharty? Yes. Mizak? Yes. Rhodes? Yes. And a motion for third and final. By Mizak, second by Janudis. Yeah, I'll uh, take this one. This is our annual... Um, resolution that we have to determine the amount of millage for the city of Bedford only, uh, not including assessments, that will be associated to all the tax bills in the year 2020, collected in 2021. Uh, this is the second phase of our uh, budget for the year of 2021. We had the tax budget and now we have the adoption of the uh, tax levies. The uh, By the end of the month, the county will determine the actual valuation of the city and that will be afforded to us uh, by the end of September. But I ask council to approve this this evening uh, as we want to make sure that we have the taxes uh, on the books of the county on time period, uh, pro proper time period. Thank you. Clerk, call a roll, please. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Fluharty? Yes. Mizak? Yes. <clears throat> Rhodes. Yes. Thank you. All right, we have a motion to approve the Planning Commission's decision to accept the conditional use approval to construct a new two-family dwelling on the vacant parcel located in an R2 one and two-family residence district known as 1275 Broadway Avenue, Bedford. Um, the Planning Commission did 
approve it. If you agree with the Planning Commission, you will vote yes. If you disagree with their decision, it will be a no vote. Um, any questions on that? Do we have City? a motion to who's going to make the motion and second it? Yeah, we have to have a, a motion to that to accept it by Spink, second by Janudis. Um, as I said, yes, you agree with the Planning Commission. No, you do not. So, clerk, call the roll, please. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Fluharty? Yes. Mizak? Yes. Rhodes? <clears throat> Thank you. And Ms. Marquardt, you did pass. Thank you. Does that mean I should hang up? <laughs> you can if you may. You don't. We're about done. So, uh, thank you for being there in case we have a question. But uh, okay. thank you. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. And now we have another motion to approve the Planning Commission's decision to accept conditional use approval to construct six new two-family dwellings on the vacant parcels located in an R2, one and two family residence district noted above, known as Bell Court, Bedford. Again, the uh, Planning Commission voted to approve the, the decision. If you agree, vote yes. If you disagree, vote no. Any questions? Seeing none, uh, I need a motion, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, motion to accept by Rhodes, second by Janudis. <laughs> now we can vote. Call the roll, please. Saunders? Yes. Kochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Misak? Yes. Rhodes? Yes. Thank you. Uh, now we have the hearing of citizens, which we do via the city manager uh, email. Do we have anything, Mike? Um, yes, there are. There's two. I have, I have two emails. Uh, one, I, I'm not sure if it was meant for work session or the regular. It says question comment for council meeting. Um, I will um, summarize it. It was. Um, from Ruth Schaefer, I don't have the address. She resides on Greencroft. Um, she discusses the parking in that area. Um, basically a synopsis, granted a few signs definitely need to be put up on certain sections of the street, um, but to have the whole street quote signed up um, is ridiculous. We do have a problem with parking on both sides of the street. So if the signs were put up on the fire hydrant side of the street, that will, would eliminate a big part of the problem. Also, if the nightly parking ban would be enforced consistently and tickets issued, that too would eliminate a lot of the problem. Um, and I think we talked about a lot of that in work session. I just didn't want, um, I wasn't quite sure what portion of the meeting she intended that for. Um, there's another email. Well, get, uh, getting to that, getting oh, to that one, uh, we already have uh, ordinance that there's no parking on the hydrant side of the street unless uh, it's otherwise posted, I believe. So okay. maybe, maybe we just need more signage. You can check into that. I will. Thank you. The other comment um, from an Irene Barto 155 West Glendale. I hope tonight's discussion during the work session is not trying to once again open the doors for a citywide parking ban on street parking, uh, which I am strongly against. It seems like once a year or so, uh, for the past five to six years, I find myself speaking before council regarding parking on city side streets. This topic was talked about extensively in 2008. Please go back and look at the minutes and all that time spent discussing the topic. Here we are again, debating street parking when there are only uh, a few violators throughout the city. 
Um, I thank Heather and Paula for the comments made during the work session. Tonight they were tonight they were the voice of reason for the issue, which is exactly what I said the last time I spoke before council regarding on-street parking. If we enforce the ordinances that we have on the books, increase the fines for repeat offenders, possibly fix signage in problem areas, there shouldn't be a need to rediscuss parking year after year. Thank you, Eileen. Yeah, and, and I can answer that. Um, we decided back there in 2008 that uh, instead of doing a blanket, no parking in the city, such as Bedford Heights has, that we would uh, concentrate only on areas that come up that may be uh, a problem. And that's why this was come up to talk about specific problem areas. It is not to blanket the whole city and these parking issues will come up from time to time. And we decided we will uh, deal with them as they come. And these have come up tonight. So that's why we talked about it in our work session. So it is not to go out and, and do a blanket and you probably will hear about parking in the future because uh, problem areas pop up uh, as residences change and people change in neighborhoods. Uh, parking sometimes becomes a problem and that we have to deal with. So uh, that's why we're bringing it up again. We are not doing a blanket through the city banning parking. So, and it has been mentioned, yes, we need to, uh, look at our existing laws and make sure those are enforced and look at our signage to make sure everything's visible. So that's that's all part of this uh, process right now. So, but thank you for the comment. Thank you, Mayor. Mike, you have another? That's, nope, that's it. Okay. Did you wanna mention um, about a former staff member? Yes, I do. Uh, it's with a heavy heart that I uh, mentioned the passing of uh, former firefighter, Dan Babiak. Um, oh. I, I don't know any details. He was living in uh, South Carolina, last I knew. Mm -hmm. uh, I worked with him in the fire department for many years. And we used to call him Laughing Dan because he always had a, a joke to tell. He was always smiling, just a great <laughs> guy and a great firefighter. And uh, he will certainly uh -huh. be missed. And we want to pass on our condolences to his family. Yes. Um, Sally and the kids. Sally and the kids, right. Yes. His son is also a firefighter. Yes. Um, so I just wanted to mention that about Dan, uh, a great guy, great guy. Anything else? If not, yes, Sandy. Yeah, I just, Paula, I wanted to thank you for sharing the incident that happened to you. Um, I know that was very difficult for you to do, um, to thank you for sharing that because all of our residents, you know, right now things are tough for a lot of people. That was broad daylight when this happened. So be aware, be very aware of your surroundings of people. Thank goodness that, that Paula is safe and she thought real quick and it didn't turn into something really bad. But thank you, Paula. I know it's taken a long time for you to share that. Uh, it hurts. Uh, it's a, it was difficult, but like I said, I'm always the one that says something to the audience. If you see something, say something. And I really mean it from the bottom of my heart. When this happened, I just froze. And I, like I mentioned to you previously, I wanted to get home to my husband. I saw my whole life go in front of my eyes. But you, okay. know what, folks, you know what, folks? We gotta stand up for one another. And we have to be here to support each other and put things on the side that shouldn't be. And the future has to be for all of us and the future for the kids. Thank you. But thank you for thank Paul. You. That was very brave. Thank you. And uh, we need a motion for adjournment. I'm here. Spink, second by Mizek. Call the roll, please. Saunders? Yes. Pochi? Yes. Spinks? Yes. Janudis? Yes. Blue Hardy? Yes. Mizak? Yes. Rhodes? Yes. Thank you all for coming and listening on uh, online with us. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank you.